or that, and that will never happen again. Music nowadays is run by TikTok, and you can maybe get a song to chart well. Albums aren't being made anymore. There aren't conceptual albums like Christina was doing, like Justin was doing. You're not; those don't sell. It's a singles market game, and it's a it's a gimmick game at best. Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi my loves, it's Destin Choice and you're watching Choice TV. So for today's video, I feel like I had to really get on here and talk about why the music industry is going broke. So as we all know, the music industry has gone through a downward spiral literally for the past 20 years. I want to say ever since CDs pretty much went out of style, music has pretty much depleted and went downhill. And we've seen a massive turn in the music industry. So much that even nowadays, literally any and everything gets on. I mean, look at all the people within the past five years that have been able to blow up. I mean, currently as we speak, one of the hottest entertainers and female rappers in the world right now is Sexy Red. And Sexy Red is a decent rapper, but she's insanely mainstream for some odd reason. I mean, when you look at someone like Sexy Red, you wonder to yourself, why is she famous? Because she came out with a lipstick line recently, and I, let me just tell you that when I found out what she was naming her lipsticks, that's when I was like, okay... This world is going to hell in a handbasket. I got a lip gloss brand, and the names for my lip gloss is something that nobody would have ever thought of. I got one called Nut, and it's the color of some nut. I got one called Gonorrhea. It's green like Gonorrhea. I got one called Yellow Discharge, like how girls be having yellow discharge. Booty hole pink, booty hole brown, coochie juice. And coochie juice is clear with silver glitter. It's cute, like, it's cute, and it smells good. And it's so, like, you know, people gonna talk shit. But other people was like, you is a marketing genius because it's so, so fast. Speaking of Sexy Red, let's all talk about Moneybag Yo. So Moneybag Yo is one of the most successful rappers in this current, you know, past two years. And did you guys know that there's been a lot of controversy surrounding around him and a lot of other entertainers because they can't sell out arenas, but yet they keep booking arenas? Bro, like, I swear to God, I'm so motherfucking heated right now. I can't stand for somebody to talk shit and I can't get to him. Cause, ho, you're not talking about Nate. So for those of y'all who didn't know, we're currently going through this crazy thing in Hollywood right now where a lot of actors and entertainers and directors and screenplay writers and anyone that's involved in the entertainment industry has pretty much been walking out of work. So as we all know, the writer strike has been huge right now where a lot of people in the entertainment industry are not going to work until these corporate giants that control most of the streaming platforms and most of the television networks give a bigger piece of their pie. And it's been horrible. So I live out here in Los Angeles and Tashina Arnold has been out here in the front lines during the writer's strike. And she recently came forth and said that she's not making that much money like a lot of people think she is after she is literally one of the most influential actors of our time. This is Tashina Arnold. This is Pam from Martin. This is Rochelle from Everybody Hates Chris. And even she's struggling. My name is Tashina Arnold. I officially became a, a sag aftra member at age 13, back when it was just AFTRA and SAG separately. So I've been in it that long. Um, I've been in show business all my life since I was 11 years old. And um, this is all I've done all my life. So I respect it. I honor it. And I work for it. And uh, as a lot of us do, performers do, and writers, we work very hard and we have to take care of each other. So it's not just one thing, but we want fairness, better health care, better residuals. I literally get one cent residuals. I'm like, the, ch the paper costs more than the residuals. So we just gotta make a change, you know? I'm not against corporate America, but corporate America has to share not a crumb of the pie. They have to share a piece of the pie, and we want a full piece. So let's go. Let's do it. Now, to make matters even worse, the music industry is also participating in the writer's strike. Not everyone, but a good portion of people who are songwriters are now going to be involved in the writer's strike. So recently, a very popular song, singer-songwriter went viral all over social media because she spoke out and she said that as a songwriter, she has gotten so many awards, so many accolades, but yet she's struggling. I am a Grammy award-winning songwriter. I have written for some really awesome artists like Zendaya, Jason Derulo, Cassie. The celebrity aspect of the entertainment industry is what really makes it hard for us to advocate for ourselves because it erases your humanity. Fame does not equal money. Fame means everybody knows you. 
It doesn't mean everyone's paying you. I'm excited about the WGA and SAG strike because it's giving people the opportunity. It's like lifting, like to be behind the curtain. Songwriters and producers are independent hey, contractors. So it is our right to a contract. It is our right to negotiate our pay, but we're denied our rights. Our income is controlled by the government. While record labels are able to negotiate with a Spotify or an Apple, songwriters and publishers are not. We have to go through the Copyright Royalty Board, which is three judges in DC, who decide how much we make for streaming. Right now, we get 15.1% of the total revenue in the US. That 15.1 is split between your publisher, all your co-writers and the producers, and you know everybody that has publishing on the song. Record companies make the lion's share. They are a very big culprit in why songwriters are making such little money. There is a whole working class of people behind the scenes in the music industry that are struggling right now. There are people who are quitting. There are people who are starting to like pivot into other things because they can't survive off of writing songs. And it's so crazy because the thing is, is like you write these massive songs and you see the whole world dancing to them and celebrating to them and you're broke. It's really hard on your mental health as well. Like I talked to so many people who are like suffering from depression, suffering from um, anxiety, suffering from suicidal ideations, because it's a real mind to be a part of creating something that you are watching make everybody else rich. We deserve to be in a free market and to negotiate directly with the people who are using our music, just like um, the record companies and the artists are able to. So what really brought me to make this video was the fact that Katy Perry, one of the biggest entertainers in the world, where she was in her prime back in the early 2000s. Most of us, I don't care who you are, we all love a Katy Perry song. You know, Firework, I Kiss the Girl, Teenage Dream, everything. Like Taylor Swift is one of the most influential pop stars of the early 2000s. And come to find out, Katy Perry just sold her publishing for a couple hundred million dollars. When I heard that, my first instinct was, wow, this is getting scary. Katy Perry hasn't even been in the entertainment industry for 20 years yet, but yet she's selling her publishing. Someone selling their publishing doesn't make any sense to me unless they've been around for at least two or three decades. Someone like Beyonce, Smokey Robinson, or even someone like Aretha Franklin, that makes sense because they have a catalog that extends decades. But a lot of artists who are in our recent times are selling their publishing. But unfortunately, it wasn't just Katy Perry. It recently made headlines that Justin Bieber sold all of his masters for all his past albums and past singles. I'm talking about all his music, like Baby, What Do You Mean, his entire album Purpose, everything. Everything from 2023 and before he sold to a major media company. And it's unfortunate because he sold it for a reported $200 million. I'm not sure how accurate that number is, but he sold most of his masters for a hundred million plus dollars and that's really unfortunate because justin bieber has sold over 150 million records worldwide why is justin bieber selling his publishing you know publishing is powerful we all know that when you sell your publishing whoever owns that can do whatever the hell they want want with it and you know this goes back to that episode of black mirror where once they own your publishing and once any major executive owns your publishing they can license your music to do whatever they want with it. They can let anyone sample it. You know, if Trump wanted to start a rap career, if he wanted to, he could sample a Justin Bieber song. And guess what? There's not much Justin Bieber can probably do about it because he just sold the masters to it. Justin Bieber recently released his recent project called JB6, which he released this during the pandemic around 2021. And unfortunately, this heavily underperformed. It, even though it was an EP, it still didn't do that well, which was a shock because this is Justin Bieber. You know, he's basically been a single artist for the past four years. You know, no one really has been listening to a body of work of his in a long time. You know, his era of being one of the biggest artists in, in the world, unfortunately, is kind of over. And since his music is underperforming, Justin Bieber also is struggling with Lyme disease. Why would he want to struggle and make more music for an ungrateful generation all while he's also struggling with a chronic illness, he just got married a few years ago, and he wants to settle down and build his family. He'd rather probably just invest his money into other aspects of his life, so I get it. But the list of people who sold their masters, unfortunately, goes on. Now, on top of that, did y'all know that Whitney Houston's manager and former best friend recently sold her masters? Yes, Pat Houston, also known as Whitney Houston's sister-in-law, who was married to Whitney Houston's brother, 
Pat Houston, who also doesn't have a good reputation of Whitney Houston's fans, a lot of people are accusing her of milking Whitney Houston's legacy and being a slimy snake. So Pat Houston has pretty much been trying to use every bit of Whitney's catalog so she can get a quick cash out. Reputation, build on the brand. For instance, Whitney Houston, a line of MAC cosmetics, her own perfume. The Houston estate and Primary Wave began working together in 2019. We've done a biographical film. We have a new gospel album. We have a Broadway show in development. It has to feel right. And I would not do anything that I didn't think she would be proud of. One of the first meetings with Houston's estate and Primary Wave involved going through her old recordings. We found a track deep in the vault called Higher Love. And one of my creatives got Kygo very quickly to remix the record. Her brand, unfortunately, was tarnished by a lot of issues. And so we said, look, we have to bring the conversation back to music. Air Supply has also embraced the partnership, including this AAA ad. I'm all out of love for my old insurance. So apparently, Whitney Houston's manager, right along with the man, this man right here, Larry Mestel, who bought the masters for Whitney's music, was making it clear that her legacy was tarnished recently, which around that time when the masters were sold, Whitney Houston was going through that controversy because Whitney Houston's secret lesbian gay lover came forth and said that she was in a very serious relationship with Whitney Houston. So he's trying to use that as an excuse for why he wants to navigate it and make it all about music again, as if this is supposed to benefit Whitney Houston and her fans, when in reality... We don't even know how much Pat even made off of Whitney Houston's masters because Whitney Houston is Whitney Houston. So it's really insane that she made it clear that Whitney Houston would have been proud of this and okay with this. It has to feel right. And I would not do anything that I didn't think she would be proud of. Fancy hearing that from her because she hasn't always had the best history with Whitney. And she also hasn't had the best history of Whitney's mother. But that's another video. So for those of y'all who are wondering, why is there always a new Whitney Houston film coming out every two years? Whitney Houston documentary, Whitney Houston book, Whitney Houston gospel album. Whitney Houston has been gone for like a decade. Why the heck do we keep hearing about a gospel album or a, a tour? Because if y'all didn't know, Whitney Houston also has a hologram that's been going on tour every other year. Um, first of all, who the fuck is buying these tickets? Who is trying to see this bullshit? Like, this is weird as hell. And let me tell y'all something. Most of y'all may say, well, we don't know if Whitney, we don't know if Whitney would have been okay with this. We don't know. Maybe her manager slash, you know, um, sister-in-law is telling the truth. Now, Dionne Warwick, the legendary singer, soul singer, recently came forth and did an interview on Andy Cohen, and she made it very clear that she is not fucking with that hologram shit. I am not a fan of the fact that they decided to do that. That doesn't please me at all. The estate had to say yes to that, right? Yeah, right. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, not please, man. Yes, no, I got it. <laughs> right, right, okay. Um... <laughs> No, they need to let Whitney rest. Leave her alone. I mean. Right. But let me ask you this. Conversely, yes. for someone who is a fan who never got to see her perform, could yes. it be a way to simulate that idea? No. 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 Okay. You can never recreate Whitney. Right. Ever. Yes. You know, and if you want to see her, she's done enough television. Right. She has a couple of movies out you can yes. go see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You must look at her face. But Yes. I mean, you got a lot of music to listen to. That's yeah, her yeah. legacy. A lot of her fans because she didn't have to speak out like that. Now, the fact that she even spoke out and that she was biting her tongue, and she, she really looked like she wanted to say more, but she couldn't. So the fact that this even happened and Dionne Warwick, someone who knows Whitney personally, says that she's not fucking with it, that tells me that she knows good and well that Whitney wouldn't have fucked with it either. Now we can add John Legend to the list because John Legend also recently sold his publishing which tells me that something deeper is going on. The pandemic not only showed society's true colors, but it also revealed what the entertainment industry is going through and how they're suffering just like us and that they're no one special. And that's why we're living in what we call the silent depression. 
Because when artists like Justin Bieber, Katy Perry, Billie Eilish, Olivia Rodrigo, and all these artists can't go out and go tour no more, guess what? Money slows down. Someone like Trey Songz, Trey Songz literally stayed on tour. He stays doing performances and club appearances. Why? Because Trey Songz is not going to come up with another hit song. Trey Songz literally missed his mark. Like, no one's listening to his music anymore, and no one's buying his new work, especially for all the controversy. But that's another video. So to see someone like Katy Perry sell her publishing, that says a lot. Now, Gabrielle Union said it the best, and I always like to play this clip because it really, it really resonates with the times, regardless of how any of us feel about Gabrielle. For most, certainly, Black entertainers, Black celebrities, um, we don't for all of the the oprahs and the the people who have just a, a lot a lot a lot a lot of money um most of us are one or two checks away from not having money to pay for all of our things you know what i mean um so this stoppage of work and money it is impacting marginalized celebrities the most um you know, like all those influencers you see who take all the trip, they're in Dubai one week and they're in, you know, some, whatever, London the next week and Paris the next week. And they're, they're they seem to be everywhere. Um, they may not have a lot of liquid income, right? And you need, you can't charge your rent. You, you have to pay your rent. So selling your publishing makes a lot of sense if you're getting older and you can't sustain yourself anymore and bills are adding up. You know, why hold on to your publishing when you can literally get 10 times of its worth that it's worth now instead of having it depreciate? Because, you know, TikTok recently announced that they're now going to have their own billboard charts. And that just goes to show you how low the music industry is right now. So why not they just take the $100 million while their publishing and their catalog is still valuable? Because... It might not be valuable in the next 20 years because a lot of artists didn't predict CD, CDs, you know, back in the 40s. A lot of artists didn't predict streaming in the 90s and early 2000s. No one predicted this. 1,500 streams literally equals one sale. So artists have to get millions upon millions upon millions of sales just for their writers to eat, just for them to eat, and just for their label to eat. So now we understand why a lot of artists are constantly being shelved and thrown to the wolves and why no one cares to invest into them because if you can't make streams, they're going to go run to the Ice Spice, to the Sexy Red, to the, you know, 6 9 back when he was popping, to the to the TikTok star who just started rapping in his bedroom like two weeks ago. You know, they're going to put him under tons of artist development, even though he only has like one or two songs. And they're going to make him a star because they see the public gravitate towards him more than they are a money bag yo. Then there's Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne recently sold his publishing, and Lil Wayne is a very powerful veteran in the music industry. Lil Wayne wasn't just selling his albums or the shit that he owns and the stuff that he wrote. He was also selling the catalogs of a lot of people who were signed to Young Money, which means he sold a good portion of Nicki Minaj's work, and he sold a good portion of Drake's work, which means literally he sold the publishing for Drake's Take Care album, Thank Me Later album, his album Nothing Was The Same, and anything before his Scorpion album where he released that song, In My Feelings and God's Plan. It's a smart move, but don't be surprised if you see a Drake song or a Nicki Minaj song being used by a hologram or in a movie that they wouldn't agree with. Let's say there was a biopic about, I don't know, um, freaking Hitler or some shit, and they wanted to use Nicki Minaj's Super Bass or Drake's uh, Take Care song. You know, they wouldn't have a say because they don't own it anymore. Then there's Shakira. Shakira also famously sold her masters recently, which was initially a shock for a lot of people because, again, this is Shakira. Hips don't lie, waka waka, fucking, like, this is Shakira, you know, why is she selling her masters? She's only been in the industry since 1998, and she's only had a successful career since, like, what, the early 2000s? That's when her career really took off the way it did. It's kind of crazy that she, of all people, is selling her masters, but I'm not too shocked because... You know, she is having a lot of issues and a lot of flack right now in the media because because if you guys didn't know, Shakira has been having a lot of financial troubles because she's currently being investigated by the Spain government for tax evasion. Yes, Shakira apparently owes over $10 million 
in taxes. Because she and many other entertainers and politicians and celebrities, of course, don't like paying an absurd amount of taxes in the country that they live in. So a lot of times they'll go to different countries like Panama or Vietnam or Bermuda or somewhere in the Caribbean, such as the Bahamas, where they can clean and hide their money through different assets. Of failing to pay 14 and a half million euros in taxes on income earned between 2012 and 2014. The general rule in Spain is, you know, for each year, if you reside, if you're domiciled in Spain, you owe taxes. And domiciled is defined for the most part as being there for more than half the year. You're supposed to keep a diary uh, or a calendar of where you are on every day. A rep for Shakira has stated she primarily lived in the Bahamas during the years in question, not Spain rejecting a possible plea deal last month, saying she has always cooperated and abided by the law, demonstrating impeccable conduct as an individual and a taxpayer. A lot of us can say, oh, wow, $100 million, $200 million, that's so cool, that's good for them. But guess what happens when a lot of these artists and entertainers sell their publishing? They can literally use your music for whatever they please. This man right here, Larry Mastel, who's one of the most powerful people in the entertainment industry and music industry right now, is buying so many people's publishing. And this is not going to be the first time y'all see his face. Y'all going to see his face three years, five years, and ten years from now. And remember I said this, this man has trillions of dollars worth of people's publishing. I'm talking about Bob Marley. I'm talking about old bands from the 70s. I'm talking about songwriters for Elvis Presley, Elvis Presley's catalog. This dude is really powerful. And guess what happens? When you get to a point as an artist, when you sell your publishing, imagine if, let's say they want to use your face and use your music in AI. They can technically do that and there's nothing you can do about it. He even said one time, he's had moments where a lot of artists have reached out to him and said they didn't want their music being used in a particular commercial, even though they had already signed over the publishing and he could technically do what he wants. You can't do that. Because I wrote that love song for my girlfriend. You can't put that in a Swiffer Mop commercial. And, and Hall and & Oates was one of the few catalogs that we ha had unfettered rights on. So we could, we could license that, these songs to literally anyone per our agreement with them, right? But Daryl would have been so upset because he wrote this song for his girlfriend, right? It was a love song to his girlfriend, She's Gone, and had sent him a meeting to him. And he and I argued vociferously, okay, for months until the, the advertising agency said, we need, it, we need an answer. And we turned it down because we knew had we done it, it would have been a huge fee. I mean, that is a big fee for a Hall & Oates song. Um, Daryl would not have been friendly with us and it would have been difficult to deal with him. So we turned it down. So it's not often an artist turns down a half a million dollar commercial for one song, a 30 second spot, but he didn't want us to do it and we didn't do it. And in management, you have to sign with us for everything also. So if we're managing, you're managing your career. 360? Not just one act. It's a 360? Yeah. The manager. Yeah. And guess what this man who's buying a lot of artist publishing said? He said that he actually obliged one time and did what one particular artist said and he didn't mind. But guess what? He didn't have to say, fine, why not? I'll remove it. He removed, he removed it because he wanted to. But imagine when it, if it gets to a point where an artist, let's say you make music, gets put in, I don't know, a Trump ad, right? Let's say they want to use your music in a Trump ad and everyone knows Trump is kind of public enemy number one in America. Let's say they want to use your music for that. And then you wake up one day and realize, oh my God, why is my music on a fucking ad? I don't want people, I don't want you guys using my music. They're going to look at you and be like, Tuh. I mean, it's too late. I mean, you sold us the rights. We could technically let that campaign use your music if we want you to, if we want. We could technically let them put that in a commercial if they want because, you know, they wanted to use it and they paid us a pretty penny and we own it. So you don't have a say. You know, if, and if they want to do that, they can actually do that. And this is so relevant because Black Mirror recently did an episode where it was starring Selma Hayek. So if y'all haven't watched the new season of Black Mirror, please go watch that one episode. So Selma Hayek was casted as a, basically herself, 
And she was casted as a very angry entertainer who was mad that her likeness was being used in a movie that she wasn't feeling because she didn't like the scenes that were being used. She didn't like how she was being portrayed. But she sold her like her likeness, her publishing, her ownership. She sold her life away to a major corporation for millions upon millions of dollars. And they had every right to portray her however they wanted because she sold her likeness away. She sold her image away. So they could technically do whatever the hell they wanted with her shit. And she was pissed. And remember this guy's name, Larry Mistel. Larry Mistel is a big reason why y'all see Whitney Houston being used as holograms. Why you see Whitney Houston having a documentary and a and a book and a and, and, and a gospel album and old songs that we never heard before, you know, being thrown into movies movies and stuff Larry Mestel is a big reason why we see AI being integrated with, with Whitney Houston so I, I'm telling y'all this this whole publishing and artists selling their publishing so early is something scary and it's building up to something worse and AI is really funny to be taking over you know we even got AI artists AI rappers we got people putting Michael Jackson vocals on I Spice songs you know we have ai you know Aaliyah singing beyonce music all that so you know things are not going to look pretty the next 10 years for the music industry and you know it's going to be way harder to make it as an artist when you're going to be competing competing with an actual machine and a robot literally so it's really scary to see what's happening right now but i think this is really just a clear sign a telltale sign that all people can do is just adapt if you can literally downgrade and downsize shit then downsize it okay netflix hulu raising their fucking prices Fuck that shit. You better cancel all that shit. There's websites like Showbox that I've been using. I'm not going to put a link, but I've been using this website called Showbox because, again, this ain't sponsored, but I've been using them. So if I don't want to watch a movie on Netflix or Hulu no more, I'm going to just go on there. Um, there's websites like MrWorldPremiere.com that I've been using, you know, when I want to watch a TV show, if, I, if, I, if I'm not trying to pay for Hulu no more. And then there's other platforms all over Google that I can literally research where I can watch a TV show or a movie from London or South Africa for free instead of paying for a streaming platform and watching it. Because at the end of the day, these Hollywood executives and these major corporations, they can't keep up with anymore. They can't keep up. Things are changing. And now we're in what we call the silent depression where a lot of people are obviously going through it and things are rough, but a lot of people are very silent about it. So we're not going to talk too much about that. All I got to say is this. Don't believe everything you see because a lot of these entertainers may seem like they're living lavish and living large and that they're at these Met Galas and award shows. And some of y'all may think being famous and if you were a famous celebrity or born into a famous family, maybe your life would be better. Don't get it twisted. Some of them are doing something extreme for some change behind the scenes. And a lot of them are lying about what they have or are swimming in ridiculous amounts of debt. Or some of them have to, you know, use their degrees, utilize their degrees and, you know, go back to school. If not go back to school, utilize their skills and, you know, work a nine to five job. That's just what they have to do, you know, get in line. And I'm, you know, I feel like a lot of people in society nowadays have no sympathy because they see shit like that. And they're like, well, all well, all well, get in line. Because nowadays people aren't at all and like, Oh, wow, a celebrity. So cool. No one's like that anymore. No one cares. Okay, you're cool. You're awesome. You're an entertainer, but I don't give a fuck because now it's gotten to a point where these entertainers are at the same level as influencers. And now people are kind of fed up and tired of influencers because we all got problems. But overall, that was that for this video. I hope you guys like, comment, subscribe, see where I'm coming from. And I just want to know what y'all think in the comment section down below about the music industry virtually going broke and how the music industry has virtually gone downhill. But I'll for this video. Again, like I said, like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, that's that. Enjoy the music. Choice out this bitch. Oh, not really sure how you feel about it. Something about the way you move makes me feel like I can't live without you. And it takes me all the way. I want you to stay.
I want you to stay. It's funny you're the broken one, but I'm the one who needed true saving. Hold on, I want you to stay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I want you to stay. That's all you get for free.